There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents. By the grace of God in Christ Jesus, who gave himself up for us all, your sins are forgiven and you are made free. Rejoice with the angels and with one another. We are home in God's mercy now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all.
Let us pray. O God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading, it's from Exodus, the 32nd chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, the first chapter. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Beginning at verse 1. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven 
over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance? Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels, of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Christ. And you may be seated. Let's see if we have any children here this morning. If not, you all get to be my children. <laughs> Come on down. Oh, good. We got some takers. Hi, guys. Wow. All right, we got some. Good. Good, 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 good. Got a couple things I want to show you today. Um, has anybody seen this book before? Yes. Yes. Where did you see this? In this, in this building somewhere? Yeah, yeah, maybe upstairs in your yeah. Sunday school, right? Good. Okie dokie. How old are you, Ben? Four. Four. How old are you? Two. Two. I'm not going to ask Mom. <laughs> how old are you? You said four. How old is? How old are you? Can you do the fingers? One. <laughs> We got a one. All right. Very good. This is a Bible. This is called the Story Bible. And every single one of you has one of these up in Sunday school. So you got your name on one of these. And you know what I love about this Bible? It's called the Spark Story Bible, by the way. What I love about it is it has pictures. It has pictures. When I pick up a book, the first thing I look at are the pictures. Do you do that? Yeah. You know, children's books are not just for children. I think we all have learned that over the years. But these Bibles have such wonderful pictures. In fact, I bet I can show you a picture, and you can tell me what the story is. What do you see here? I see a giant. This is a big guy really big guy and here's a little boy with a slingshot and he's got a rock in that slingshot and he's getting ready to throw it at the giant can anybody out there tell me what story this could possibly be David and Goliath very good you must have gone to Sunday school all right pictures say a thousand words and so this, this Bible is so cool. I just love this. Whoop. Hmm, here's a woman riding on a donkey. Somebody's leading the donkey, and she looks like she's about to have a baby. Any idea who this might be? Jesus is the baby, right? So who's Jesus' mommy? Do you know that yet? Mary. Mary's riding on the donkey, and Joseph is Jesus' daddy here on earth. All right. I want to show you another picture. This is one of my favorite pictures. I keep it in my office. It reminds me why we invite people to come to church. First off, what do you see? What do you see, Ben? Is it a boy? You see a feather. All right, he's a couple feathers on that picture. What do you see? See a little boy? Yes. And I'll tell you his name is Sam. And he's got on something. What's he got on his head? A hat with feathers. It's all decorated real nice and pretty. Like a party. Maybe he's at a birthday party. That could be, but his mommy, 
his mommy wrote these words. She says, I want to give him what I found, which is to say a path and a little light to see by. This is Anne Lamott. She's a Christian writer, and she's talking about why she takes Sam to Sunday school. Think about that. I want to give him what I found, which is to say a path and a little light, a little light to see by. Isn't that a great picture? I love this picture. This, is, this could be every single one of us and all those people that we want to be here, that we need to invite to come. How about if we close with we hold hands? Can you hold my hand? Can you hold my hand? There we go. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the church. Thank you for your story. Amen. Good job. Good job. Thank you for coming up here today. You all have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. I should say that anytime any of you want to come on up, come on down. You are all God's children, is how I see it. And the day that we don't have children in this service, guess what? You're it. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit today about word pictures and how they say a picture says a thousand words. A picture can say a thousand words. We call ourselves the inviting church. Now, we've been doing that for a couple of years now, but I wonder if we really understand what that means. The inviting church. We have it on all of our publications. We have it on our sign. i got to get my directions right. Right out here. And it tells our times for the worship, times for Sunday school. But it begins with the inviting church. Now, we could have put all are welcome. We could have said just welcome. And I know the evangelism team was thinking about that and thinking, well, any church can say that. Isn't any church a welcoming church where everyone is welcome? But how can we say it in a way that people driving by, and we get about 30 to 6, how many cars now, Jim, did they say? It used to be 30,000. Uh, 32,000. Okay, 32,000. <laughs> 32,000. He's had his coffee this morning, I can tell. All right, so everybody driving by, how, what will catch their attention? What will be appealing? What will be welcoming? And so the idea of the inviting church came about. I like that idea. I like the idea that you and I, I believe, hear that and we think, okay, we have such good news, such good news stories that need to be told. How are we going to get this story out to the world? How are we going to get these stories from this place to out there in the world? Well, one way you can do it is you can invite people in. That's the easy way. We throw a big party, we invite everybody to come, like Christmas and Easter. We tell the story and hope they come back, not next Easter or Christmas, but the next Sunday, to hear more of the story, the inviting church. But I have another take on that. As I was reading today's gospel, in what Jesus is talking about today, I think we are the ones that are being invited. Think about that. I think we in the church are the ones being invited to step out of our comfort zones, to step out of our space and go out with the stories, 
go out into the world, tell the stories, and what we're going to find is, you know what? God's already out there. Because I know it's a scary thing for, for me to be talking to Lutherans, and I'm one of them, and to say, you're going to have to go out of here and talk to somebody. You're going to need to tell somebody the good news, the good stories, no matter where you begin, whether it's with a child or an adult, it does not matter. You begin with the stories. And eventually you'll find that your story will make its way in there. Your story is a part of his story, God's story, the inviting church. I believe that these stories empower us. These stories give us the courage and the strength to go out and open our mouths, talk to people, invite them to come in here, yes, because we believe this is a healing place. We believe God is here. Otherwise, I don't think any one of us would be here. We believe that this is where God wants us to gather together as the community so that we can be healers of one another. This is a healing place, folks. Not because of us, but because of God. And the world needs healing. The world needs healing desperately. So I think God is inviting every single one of us, the inviting church. If you become a member of this congregation, you're going to be like me. We have a task to do. We are to be the inviting church. There are times when we need to step away from playing it safe. There are times when we need to break out of our comfort zones, whatever that is. There are times when we need to go places, and I'm thinking of the lost sheep and the story that Jesus told today about the person who had a hundred sheep. A hundred sheep. And he was counting them one day, and now all of a sudden there were just 99. Now he could have said, well, I've got 99. Who cares about the one? Let it go. But he didn't say that. If you will look in your bulletins, look at verse number 4. See, it's easy to hear these stories, and in these stories, we hear ourselves as one of the characters. But in this one, he says, which one of you, verse 4, which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, let's stop right there. This is not about the sheep. It's about the shepherds. We are all the shepherds. We are all being asked, if you have one, just one that goes astray, perhaps one of your children, do you simply say, well, that's just too bad. Let them go. You wouldn't do that, would you? I wouldn't either. And so Jesus is saying something here to us. The 99 are safe where they are. But you can leave them and go out into the dark, go out into the places that are unknown, go out to places that may feel a bit scary. I can imagine that shepherd going out into the dark. That's you and me. We're the ones called to go out. To go out and to do what? To look and to search every single nook and cranny until we find what is lost. Until we find what is lost. Look at the story with the uh, woman in the nine, the ten coins. She had ten coins. She could have easily said, well, my goodness, I have nine. Surely just one missing. No problem. If I had a dollar and it was ten dimes, I've got 90 cents. That's perfectly fine. Why do I need another 10 cents? Let it go. Forget about it. But Jesus says that she searched 
And she searched. She turned that house upside down. And she swept it so clean that there was no way that anything was going to get beyond her. And she found it. She searched until she found the one missing coin. And what both did, both the shepherd and the woman, is they threw a party. It was party time because the lost had been found. The lost had been found. I believe in word pictures. I believe when we invite people to come in here, one of my thinking, my little pet peeves is, they had better find themselves in this place. When a person walks in, they should hear a song, they should hear something that resonates with their hearts. Maybe their language. Maybe their picture of God. When we talk about seeing ourselves in church, I'm talking about a person walks in and can they, in the bulletins, can they find themselves? In our children's Bibles, can they find pictures, can the children find themselves? When I grew up in Sunday school, all the kids were white. All the books, all the materials had white children. There was no race, there was no color. That's wrong. That's wrong. When people come into this church, I hope to God they find themselves in the music, the types of music we sing, because not everybody knows the traditional ones. We can learn some new songs. A person of color should find themselves in this building, in a picture, somewhere. And that's one of the reasons in the mural out there we have 12 different people of all different races, all different colors, all different hairstyles, you name it. That is very intentional, folks. Because we're the inviting church. We're the ones who are inviting folks to come in here and do what? Not see us. God knows they're not here to see us. We are saints and sinners just like them. We mess up, we clean up well, but by golly, we are both saint and sinner, just like folks coming in here, and they're coming to see God. They want to hear about God, they want to know about God, and it begins when they come in here, we hope. The Inviting Church. One of my favorite movies... And I hope you have seen this one. It was the one um, Morgan Freeman played God in the movie. Remember that? It wasn't too long ago. I'm going to date myself now. Uh, Morgan Freeman plays several parts in that movie. But in particular, he plays God. And if you remember how he was dressed, remember when when, uh, Bruce Almighty first met God, what God was doing? I think it is so cool. It is my image of God. I can tell you right now, he was dressed as a janitor. I love it. Don't tell me God doesn't like a clean place. He was in there mopping the floor, remember that? Of a huge warehouse. And Bruce Almighty comes in to tell him his problems. He can't believe it's God number one. And you know what God does? And I think this is right on the money. He invites him to pick up a mop, pick up a broom, pick up whatever it is to to begin the work of cleaning, to begin the work of joining in on what God is already doing. You see, that's what God's inviting us to do. Whatever it is, when you leave this place, whether it's to help somebody carry groceries, whether it's to help somebody doing their homework, children, no matter what it is, pick up a broom, pick up a mop, pick up a book, pick up whatever it's going to take if you need a tool, and begin to talk about your your experience with God. 
in what you're going to learn. I've, I have learned this so well. God's already there. There's nothing to be afraid of. God is already out there in the world, folks. We don't need to take God to the world. He's already out there. But we need to go out there and tell people that God's in here too. There's a reason Jesus formed the church. It took me a long time to figure this one out. Why do we need church when we got Jesus? Well, we need each other. Because we need each other to tell the story. Every one of us has bits and pieces of our own story. Yes, we are to invite people in, but we are also being invited. We are being invited to go out with the story. The inviting church. Because that's a good picture of God. This story of the lost sheep, this story of the woman who lost the coins, those are pictures of God. Those are pictures that Jesus had painted, saying this is what God would do. This is who God is. And his church should reflect that love. Where have I heard that before? His church should reflect that care. His, that church should be reaching out, not in, but out, with the love of Christ. I swear I've heard that before. Folks, it's who we are. The inviting church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Jesus is here. Amen. Thank you.
confess our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this life that you have given us to share together. We thank you for the change of seasons and the possibilities you set before us each day, always making things new. We confess to you, O oh Father, that each one of us has served as a lost sheep. And we thank you for finding us, bringing us back to the fold for accepting us even though we are unacceptable. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hear us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for inviting us to share with you in the means of grace. We thank you for your church throughout the world. We ask you especially to be with your church in California and Colorado and New Jersey, in Syria and Nigeria, North Korea and Egypt. Help we, your church throughout the world, to provide healing and hope to all those in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come now, Holy Spirit, be with this church. We pray for every member of our congregation. We pray for our pastors, Carol and Jim. We pray for our Bishop of Virginia, Jim Monty. We pray for our old presiding Bishop Mark and our new presiding Bishop Elizabeth. Be with all your sheep throughout the world. And especially this day, we pray for Mary and Jacobine, for Deborah Grimley, for Barb Hone, for Susan Marty, for Greg Leitz, for the family of Rob Touchings, for Emily Louster, and for all those we name now, either silently or aloud before you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh Holy One, we entrust all for whom we pray confident in your abundant and abiding mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share the peace with each other. And it's good to be having Kathleen playing today. I know Amy's off, probably with daughters, right? Maybe over at JMU. So is that where Amy is? So okay, and with her husband. Good. 
Let's now receive our tithes and offerings for the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this to remember me and again after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks he gave it to all of them saying this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this to remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us pray. We come again to you, O God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way. Equip us for every good work that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before the benediction, let me take this time to talk about the healing prayers. So at the end of the service, after the final hymn, those who want to come forward to have the prayers of healing for yourself, on behalf of someone else, maybe for some situation that you really want God to bring healing and wholeness to, if you would come to the front of the sanctuary and then uh, those from our health ministry and Pastor Carol will be here at the altar rail when we ask you to come to pray. And we as a congregation need to be supportive in that when we leave, we're going to do quietly today and uh, go out in the narthex and we will close the doors at that point so that there can be you know, quietness for the prayers. After the benediction, I'd be asking someone representing health ministry to lead us all in this this prayer who might that be so i know be emily okay receive now our blessing god almighty send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life the hand of god protect you the holy angels accompany you the blessing of almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit be with you now and forever amen amen Emily, if you'd lead us, please. God, heal you your body and soul. May, may your pain cease. May, may your strength increase. increase. May blessings, love, and joy surround you.
Go in peace. Remember the poor.